8th grade open up resources illustrative mathematics unit 7 lesson 6 what about other bases problem number one Priya says I can figure out 5 to the power of 0 by looking at other powers of 5 5 to the power of 3 is 125 5 to the power of 2 is 25 then 5 to the power of 1 is 5 a what pattern do you notice I notice that when a power of 5 drops by 1, the value is divided by 5. For example, 125 divided by 5 is 25, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. B. If this pattern continues, what should be the value of 5 to the power of 0? Explain how you know. Let's review the pattern. 125 divided by 5 is 25. 25 divided by 5 is 5 and 5 divided by 5 is 1, so 5 to the power of 0 would be 1. C. If this pattern continues, what would be the value of 5 to the power of negative 1? Explain how you know. 5 to the value of negative 1 equals 1 fifth, because the value of 5 to the power of 0, which is 1, divided by 5 is 1 divided by 5, or 1 over 5, which is 1 fifth. Problem number two, select all the expressions that are equivalent to four to the power of negative three. Four to the power of negative three can be written as one over four to the power of positive three. And that can be expressed as one fourth times one fourth times one fourth. And that's equal to one over 64. Let's take a look at expression A. Expression A is negative 12, and since negative 12 is not equal to 1 over 64, I will not select expression A. Let's look at expression B. 2 to the power of negative 6. We can rewrite this with a positive exponent. That would be 1 over 2 to the power of 6, or 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 which equals 64. So the value for expression B is equal to one over 64. So I would choose expression B. Let's look at expression C, one over four to the power of three. That's the same as one over four times four times four, which is equal to one over 64. So I would choose expression C. Expression D is one fourth times one fourth times one fourth. And we know that that equals 1 over 64, so we can choose that one. Expression E is 12, and 12 certainly is not the same as 1 over 64, so we can't choose that one. Expression F is a negative times a negative times a negative, which is a negative, and 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, and we know that negative 64 is not the same as positive 1 over 64, so we can't choose F. And finally, expression G. 8 to the power of negative 1 over 2 to the power of 2. 8 to the power of negative 1 can be rewritten as 1 over 8. And 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So that's equivalent to 1 over 8 times 4. And since 8 times 4 is 32, this value is 1 over 32, which is not equivalent to 1 over 64. So we can't choose G either. Problem number 3. Write each expression using a single exponent. A. 5 to the power of 3 over 5 to the power of 6. 5 to the power of 3 is 5 times 5 times 5. And 5 to the power of 6 is 5 times itself 6 times. 5 divided by 5. That's worth 1. And 5 divided by 5 is also worth 1. And 5 divided by 5 is worth 1. So on top we have 1 times 1 times 1, or 1, and on the bottom we have 1 times 1 times 1 times 5 times 5 times 5. That's equivalent to 1 over 5 to the power of 3. Using a single exponent, we can write this as 5 to the power of negative 3. Expression B. 14 to the power of 3 on the inside of the parentheses and to the power of 6 on the outside of the parentheses. We can multiply these exponents and we have 14 to the power of 18. Expression C, 8 to the power of 3 times 8 to the power of 6. Since they have the same base, you can add the exponents. The power of 3 plus the power of 6 is the power of 9. 
8 to the power of 3 times 8 to the power of 6 is 8 to the power of 9. Expression D. 16 to the power of 6 over 16 to the power of 3. That's the same as 16 to the power of 6 divided by 16 to the power of 3. We need to subtract the exponents. Since 6 minus 3 is 3, we have 16 to the power of 3. E. Inside the parentheses, we have 21 to the power of 3. And on the outside of the parentheses, we have the power of negative 6. We can multiply these exponents. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. So we have 21 to the power of negative 18. Problem number 4 from 8th grade unit 5 lesson 6. Andre sets up a rain gauge to measure rainfall in his backyard. On Tuesday, it rains off and on all day. A. Which of the two graphs could represent Andre's story? Explain your reasoning. Well, there's a couple clues. He starts at 10 a.m. with an empty gauge when it starts to rain. Here you can see on graph A, it starts at 10 a.m. with zero rain in his gauge. And graph B doesn't start at 10 a.m. So for that reason alone, I'm going with graph A. B. Label the axes of the correct graph with appropriate units. It says here that two hours later he checks the gauge and the gauge has two centimeters of water in it. That means that the units would be hours and centimeters. The horizontal units across the bottom are time of day in hours and the vertical units are centimeters representing the height of the water in the rain gauge. It also mentions that it starts raining even harder at 4 p.m. The rain stops, so Andre checks the rain gauge and finds it has 10 centimeters of water in it. C. Use the graph to determine how much total rain fell on Tuesday. If I look at the graph along with what I just read, I can see that on Tuesday at 4 o'clock, there was a total of 10 centimeters of water in the gauge. So I'd say the total is 10 centimeters. It also mentions that Andre was checking it and he accidentally knocked the rain gauge over and spilled most of the water, leaving only three centimeters of water in the gauge. This is represented in the graph. I've drawn an arrow to the graph that marks this event. It also mentions that he checks for the last time at 5 p.m. and there is no change. That means that it hasn't rained since the last time he checked it. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.